This is a video on high speed track, bending trim tabs, trying to get your high speed track in at the end of your track and balance. After traveling around a whole bunch and talking to some guys, it seems like a lot of people don't know how to read the EC135 uh, trim tab bending tool. It's kind of complicated. I've screwed it up myself a handful of times, no doubt. A couple key things that we're going to go through, very important. You definitely want to bend them, both tabs, the inboard and outboard, equally. If they're off by 0.3 millimeters, it's going to throw you off. So we're going to go through a handful of those things today, okay? Take a look at the paperwork that comes with the tool, the trim tab tool. You want to make sure that the M6 bolts are correct. They shouldn't be changed. Honestly, all we have is EC135s, so they should never change, right? The front is 17 millimeters, the two bolts, and then the bolt in the back is 10 and a half. Check it. Get your caliper out and just make sure it's right. After that, you, you put the dial indicator into the tool, cinch it down so it doesn't move. Put it on the corner of a table. Put it on a plane is, is what it says. So if you put it on the corner of a table, you're going to get, it should be 9.5 millimeters. Uh, it won't be. Every corner of the table is different. Every table is different. It's kind of annoying. But once you put it onto the table, you just spin the bezel uh, till, till the pointer reads 0.5. Let's take a quick look on how to read this gauge. That's 9. That's 9.77. Okay. And on the corner of the table, they want you to set it to 9.5 which is going to be kind of crazy because see how that red number is right next to 10? It's not 10. So you're going to get screwed up when you put it up there, but we're going to adjust this to five. You just twist this right here. Twist, 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 9.5. So now we've gone nine. 0.5. Complicated. Not really. Look, after you said it's 9.5, wherever on any corner of a table it's going to be different but once you set it there don't change the bezel if you change the bezel in the middle of your tracking you're going to screw yourself up your numbers are not going to be the same okay so once you set it be happy with it see so watch if i go to another table corner i got it on the uh got the studs on yep what's that say that reads 9.3 9 actually 9.28 okay so find a corner of the table you're happy with and adjust it Okay, but don't change it afterwards. I like this one better because the arrow's at the bottom. I like the five being close to the bottom. Done. 9.5. Great. Let's go to the helicopter and check it out. Another thing that you're going to want to look at before you put the tool onto the helicopter is you want to make sure the bottom of the dial indicator, the tips are screwed in all the way. If they're not, um, you're going to be off, you know, by 0 0.3, 0 0.5 millimeters. A neutral trim tab is 5.0 millimeters and you're allowed to bend the trim tabs up 1.5 and down 1.5 that makes the limits 3.5 to 6.5 millimeters so now let's put this thing on the blade see what it looks like a 4.83 so neutral is 5 so neutral would be right there right 5 millimeters is neutral and you're allowed to bend it up 1.5 and down 1.5. When you're going to bend some tabs, see this one that says do not bend? Obviously don't bend that one, right? There's two tabs here. One here, one here. I have the tool on it right now. We're gonna take a quick look at that, okay? You have to bend them exactly the same. If they're off by 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.5 millimeters, if, they, if they're not the same, then they're gonna to try to twist the blade at high speeds at different, different amounts, so it's gonna be a lot of vibration. So you wanna make sure that they're bent the same. Inboard, outboard. Okay, we got the trim tab tool up there. This is the bender. This is the tool that checks the checks how much it's bent. So let's we'll see what we have. Let's first, let's look at the tab. If we look at the number, it looks like it's 5.32. So you grab the top, pull it up a little bit, and then you could slowly bring it down. So you can get your brain wrapped around it. I've screwed this up plenty of times. Trust me, five. Keeps going till it hits the stop. You, you know, if you want to make sure you have it right, you just bounce it up and down a little bit, okay? Not crazy. 5.35. I got the 5.35. Great. Let's check the other one. A neutral trim tab is 5.0. That one's 5.32. Not a big deal. You don't want it to read 5.0 and the other one's 5.3. You're going to have huge problems, okay? You're going to have a vibration you can't get rid of. All right, just so we have an idea of what we're doing here, if you want to bend it... If you want to go up, it gets a smaller number. See how it goes smaller? 
So you want to bend it down, gets a bigger number, okay? If you bend it up, bend it up far and then come back down. Anyway, when you're done, take the weight of the bender off of it, then go up and down with the uh, micrometer. 5.34, 5.33, cool. But you could get this dialed in real good. 5.34, yep, 5.33, so we're good there. So at 140 knots, it the tip of the blade changes 14 millimeters for every one millimeter you bend the tab. At 120 knots, it changes 12 millimeters, and at 80 knots, it's 10 millimeters for every one millimeter bend on the tab. Another thing that we need to look at is part of the maintenance manual for the track split limits and the vertical imbalance. So if you look at the maintenance manual, this revision right here is came out January 25th, 2022. What revision is it? Revision 011.00. Always check the maintenance manual for current revisions. I assume no liability for your tracking and balancing. Just a heads up. But if we look at this chart, they want uh, ground run, hover, and ground effect 80 knots, 120 knots. The track split measurement is not necessary if the vertical imbalance is equal or lower than 0.12 ips. It also says if the value of 0.12 ips for the vertical imbalance cannot be reached, do as follows. Note, if the value 0.12 ips of the vertical imbalance cannot be reached, do the track split measurement additionally. The track split measurement supersedes the measurement of the vertical imbalance. Note, either the measurement of the vertical imbalance and the track split limit must be in their tolerance. Okay, either, either or, right? You follow me? What the maintenance manual is telling you is if you don't have a camera on your microvibe or something like that, you have tracking gear, but you can't shoot the track, then they want you to go and put the reflectors on it or get equipment where you could use a Strobex or whatever to make it work. But the microvibe has a camera. You don't need reflectors. I don't know how it works. Works with freaking lasers, I guess. Anyway, so what they're telling you is if you can't get the vertical ips down to below 0.12, then you need to get the track split limit to below 40 millimeters. 40 millimeters is crazy high, okay? Um, the limits changed. Like I said, this revised maintenance manual, the beginning of 2022, it changed a bunch of this. It used to be, I think it was 15 millimeters opposing blades and 10 millimeters for blades one after another. Um, but anyway, don't need to worry about that. The closer you can get your, your track split at high speed to be close to zero or less than 10, then your IPS level is gonna come down a whole bunch. Like you're not gonna to need to worry about it. And like it says right here, it says either the measurement of the vertical vibration or the track split must be in their tolerance either. So one of them doesn't have to be. So if you get the track split to be 10 millimeters, point to point or peak to peak, and the vertical IPS is 0.18, then that's as good as you can get. And that's what they're trying to tell you in this maintenance manual here. This is what the microvibe screen looks like. After you shot the track, one of the important things you need to know is it's one, two, three, four, blades one, two, three, four. It's blue, red, yellow, green. Another thing you're gonna need to know, up at the top it says 14.31 millimeters peak to peak from the high blade to the low blade. If you want to change that from millimeters to inches, over there on the left it says track options. You could go in there and change it. Once the track is shot, over here on the left, it says millimeters, and on the top, it says 10. On the bottom, it says negative 10. Right after, you, right after the screen pops up, it'll be 50 and negative 50 on the bottom. You hit zoom in like three or four times, and now it's 10 on the top, 10 on the bottom, and each one of these hashes is two millimeters. So what I do is I just write this down. I just write it down on a sheet of paper so I could follow my track. Hover. 80, 120, and 130. And then you could see a trend on the blades. But this one right here, the red blade is eight millimeters high. The blue blade is even. The yellow blade is one millimeter down. And the green blade is six millimeters down. The red and green blades, number two and four, are opposite. So if you make an adjustment on the high speed track on the trim tabs, if you make an adjustment from the trim tabs, it's going to affect the opposite. It's going to affect all the blades just a tiny bit, especially at high speeds. But if you're in a hover and you got this, you'd want to change the PC links. 14 millimeter spread isn't crazy. You want to check the limits in the maintenance manual though. On the ground, on the ground is one thing. You just want to get the balance in, but then once you lift it to the hover, all of this is going to change. This could totally, all these blades could fly totally different from ground to hover. This is a screenshot from the ground lateral. So this is the track on the ground. Obviously, if it looked this way, I wouldn't worry too much about it on the ground, but if you have these numbers 
in the uh, if you have these numbers at high speed, you might want to do something about that. But the other thing is 14 millimeters. That's not that far, but you can use the trim tabs to dial it in to get really close, really close. And then your ride is smoother and then your vertical vibration comes down. And that's what you're really shooting for. So this is the video for high speed track. I'm going to try to make more videos just on track and balance. Maybe I'll put them all together, but we'll see what we can come up with. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you get some value out of it. All right. Later.